Hello. So we are back Tuesday, yeah. And we have a job. We have an all-in-one computer. Asus. AMD A2 processor. This is not an old one. Let's see a model number. Oh yeah, it's here on the back. Model number. No, I can't see the model number. Give me one second. It's a Asus. Model Okay, product name is all in one PC model name ET two zero one two A U K B. Okay, so that's the model number. What this is doing. Let's see together. I have the charger here. Let's check the charger together. Minus plus, and we have there 19 volts here, yeah, 19.3. Plug the charger. We have the power button there, here. Press the power button, nothing happened, yeah. So the computer should come on when we are pressing the power button. But it's not happening, it's, it's nothing happening. Yeah? So it's safe to say the com this computer is dead. Now what we can do more to diagnose the problem. Try with the power supply, 19 volts. Just to see what's going on on the input. So we have ground. We have ground. We have plus. And it's taking nothing, you know. There should be like... It is, it is a bit of current. It's taking a little bit of current, but not too much. So possible, like the 3.3 volts uh, power supply to be up and running. So I'm just curious to see what is, what is the problem. Because if the 3.3 volts power supply is up and running, also the 19 volts power rail is fine. So I don't know what can be the problem, but we'll see now. Just try to figure it out how this must be open. Plastic clips. So how this must be open? Mm -hmm. Hmm. I'll try to open this from the top side.
Okay, so it's open. It's open. We need some access on the uh, on the board because I can't see anything. So where this is not coming out? Okay. One more here. Wow, this is small. Look at the processor, it's just a small one. Okay, let's plug the charger and do some. Uh, where is the chipset? The, the, the Super I will probably is on the other side. Charging port. We have here some MOSFETs. We can check the. We can check the 90 volts power rail minus. Let's see. There is nothing. There is nothing. On the charging port, we have 19, so the charging port is good. So definitely we have a motherboard issue. Unfortunately we have to take out the motherboard because probably the good parts are on the other side. We are getting there. Just a little bit more work. So what can be wrong here? Okay, we have the screen connector here. Let's get out the screen.
a screenshot. One more screw here. And the board is out. Wow, it's a nice board. Looks like a classic motherboard. Have the Super A, which is a ENE chip. Chip set. Power supplies everywhere. Okay, this is a nice one. Hmm. This should be easy. Let's leave this one on side. Yeah. Let's plug the charger and check some things. Charger is plugged in. I see 19 volts power rail, present 19 volts, 3.3, 3.3, that's bad. I should try to reset the BIOS, should be a BIOS battery somewhere. Or not, yeah. So they put the BIOS battery on the other side of the board, so you have to take out the motherboard to reset the BIOS. Okay, power on button. Where's the power on button? Power on. This one, this one, this one. Power on, nothing happened. And the fan is spinning. Can't believe. One more time. And it's not coming on. That's interesting. Why is it not coming on now? Let's check the voltage on the power button. And we have zero volts. Y0 on the power button. One more time, that's ground, 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 zero, and zero. Okay, give me one second.
Okay, sorry for that. I don't think you can see the power button. Well, it's on this side. There, here. So here on one pin of the power button we have nothing. On the other pin we have nothing. So we have no voltage on the power button. Okay. Let's see if we still have 3.3 on the... 3.3... On the Super I.O. Yeah, we do have 3.3 on the Super I.O. But not on the power button. No? No. So how this is possible? Hmm? How this is even possible? Because on the power button you have a pull-up resistor to 3.3. So, uh, it's, let's say, like it's nearly impossible. 3.3. 19. Okay, I'm checking the voltage on the ribbon cable. From the power button board. So we can have like a faulty track. And I do have 3.2 somewhere on the board. I don't think you can see. So somewhere here... Here I have 3.2. You can see on the, on the multimeter. But not on the power button. The power button 0. The power button 0. So not on the power button. So we can have a track problem. Yeah. You know we should we should concentrate our attention. Yeah. On uh, on this board. Yeah. This is the power button. Let's. Uh, I can't use this one. I will use the other multimeter because it's beeping. So, what do I want to check ground? And the ground is not working. There is no ground. This ground. This ground, yes. Oh, yeah, even this one. So, the ground is fine. And the plus the plus of the power button, it is coming here first pin. I think this will be a funny repair because I have to follow that track to see what's going on there. Voltage, ground, and we have zero, yeah? So we have to follow this wire up to the super I.O. and see what's going on there, yeah? Because even if you have uh, a dead super I.O., you should still have power... Uh, on the power button. Let's see. So this truck is going here. That's all. I don't need this. Uh, I can follow the on the board. So we can check together.
okay so what do we have to check this one the first one where is going we have a resistor here maybe you can see better under the microscope you see these are funny folds so here the first pin yeah this one it's coming here it's going here here we have a capacitor to ground so it's not shorted from here it's going to this resistor and here probably from here okay this is a big resistor possible this one to be on 3.3 most likely so we have to find where this pin is going on the super IO yeah and with the beeping it's easy you know to find a, a track because it's beeping the multimeter is beeping Okay. It's going here. spin is not ground now he's going on the first spin okay now let's see where is going that resistor so we have a resistor which is going somewhere I suppose it's going into the 3.3 but I can't say for sure you know yes so it's going to the 3.3 .3 volts power rail. So that's our pull up resistor. One more time. So something is wrong here. So this is uh, our power button truck. Yeah. This is going here. This is a low ohm resistor. Here we have a capacitor to ground. From here is going here once yeah it's going here on this pin from here yeah so it's going straight to the super io but also also yeah also it's going to this resistor the other side of the resistor is connected to 3.3 .3 volts power rail yeah so here we have 3.3 .3, and here we should have 3.3 .3 if the power button is not pressed you understand what I should draw on the paper maybe I should draw on the paper give me one second let me find a pen I found the pen let me find a paper okay I found the paper yeah 
So we have something like that. We have the power button, which is connected to ground. Yeah. That's the power button, and you push this pre this power button to start the the computer. Yeah. So this one is coming through that ribbon cable to the board. So what do we have here? We have a resistor, that one, which is going to plus 3.3 volts. And from here, it's coming on one pin from the Super I.O. Yeah? So what will happen? Normally, here we should have 3.3 volts all the time, and we don't have. We have zero. Yeah? It's like always the power button is pressed. When it's pressed, this line will be zero. When it's not pressed, this line will be 3.3 because it's kept and up by this resistor. Okay? So, when you don't press the power button, here should be 3.3. When you press the power button, this is going to zero because uh, it's shorted to ground by the power button. That's how the input of the Super IO knows when the power button is pressed. When it's pressed, the voltage here will be zero. Yeah? When it's not pressed, it will be always 3.3. So, we have here a problem. We have zero here, even if the power button is not pressed. So, we can have this resistor to be broken, or the super I is shorting to ground this power rail. Hopefully it's the resistor, because if it's the super I.O. it's bad. Yeah? Let's plug the charger and check one more time. So again, let's pay attention on that resistor. So what do we have here? Check on the multimeter. We have 3.3, you can see, 3.3. And on the other side, we have 3.3, I can swear was zero. So this pin was zero. This one was zero volts. So I can't believe. This is sick. So look, now if I press the power button, yeah? Pressing the power button does mean shorting that pin to zero, to ground, yeah? Shorting the pin. And the board is on, the fan is spinning. Okay, this is the worst case scenario. When you have a random fault. This is a random fault. Because I swear, if, I, if, if you check one more time the video, we have zero volts there. I checked on the power button, I checked on the board, with the board outside. So this is just a random fault. Three point three, I can't believe. Okay, let's put the board back. No, this is a random thing. This is random. This must be random. No way, I checked, you know. Let's plug only this cable. Let's plug the power. Now let's check now. Yeah, with the multimeter first. On the power button. Ground. Zero. And zero. That's sick. The first pin. Zero. So as soon as we plug the cable. That voltage died. Okay. Let's try one more time. Let's remove this cable. Now let's check. Well, maybe we have a short here on this board somewhere. Plug the charger. Let's check the first pin. 
and it's 3.3 so we have a short here somewhere I don't think it's the ribbon here but so most likely is the power button if, if, if you play with these things you know the power button actually the, the, the touching thing it's a round metal elastical has a layer of uh, I don't know some protection layer and that protection layer is getting broken over the time and it's touching on the contacts it's a protection layer but metal I don't know copper I don't know what it is silver I don't know so if we now we have 3.3 .3, if we plug this cable right now right now and we have zero you can see on the multimeter zero volts so that means we have a short let's take out this and check with ground because with ground is no short that's the funny part so we ground let's switch on the diode mode we ground look look there it's one point uh, okay let me switch on uh, Ohms, yeah. With ground, we have 2.2 kilo ohms. It's not even short, but the problem is 2.2 kilo ohms probably is lower compared with the pull-up resistor from here. This one, I don't know if I can check it here on the circuit. It show me like 8.2. So according with the With the ohm low, yeah, it's not ohm low, it's the Kirchhoff low for uh, multiple resistor, I think. I don't remember, but anyway, uh, all your current will go to 2.2 kilo ohms instead of 8.2. So it's a div divider, sorry, it's a divider. So you have 8.2 kilo ohms and you have connected with the ground 2.2 uh, kilo ohms and on the median side, you know. Okay. So this 2.2 kilo ohms is not okay. Two point two kilo ohms. When I press the power button, it is going to zero. When I release the power button, it's two point three kilo ohms. Releasing two point two. So it can be a capacitor, it can be the power button itself. You see here, it's a it's here is the moment when you can't play with amps. So you can come with how many amps do you want or how many voltage do you want? You can't beat this 2.2 kilo ohms. So you can't test it with the power supply. So actually you have to remove. Remove something. Let's remove this connector. And it's gone. Now without the connector it's 243 kilo ohms. So the short is on this board here. It's not a short, it's like a partial short. It's 2.2 kilo ohms. I'm pretty sure it's the, it's the power button itself. The easy way we can beat up the 2.2 kilo ohms if we are replacing the pull up resistor with, let's say, 1 kilo ohm. If we're replacing that one with 1 kilo ohm, it will work like that. We just redesigned the schematic. Or maybe not. One kilo ohm. Maybe less. Maybe like 500 ohms. <laughs> so let's see what we have here. On the power button. 
It is a funny fault. Because you remember once the motherboard start. Like after I uh, Okay, we have a we have a capacitor to ground there. You can see there. So that's the power button. This one. That's the power button pin. It's coming through a resistor and a capacitor to ground. I can remove this cap. Yeah, let's remove it. Let's check now. It's still 2.2 kilo ohms. I can remove this resistor. Yeah. Let's see now. Now here is like 200. You can see on the multimeter. No, it's 2.2 kilo ohms. No, no. Here is on the on the power button itself. We have 2.2 kilo ohms. On the on the main line. We have like 200 and something. So the short is on the power button. Now I know this is funny. But where we can find a power button like that? How you can fix a power button? I can swap it with something else. Yeah. But you know that's funny. So you have a partial shorted power button which is 2.2 kilo ohms that's not even a short it's a resistor sorry it's a resistor so your power button it's a resistor right now so let's get this board out let's get this computer out You know, always the random faults will be hard to be found. Check one more time, straight on the power button pins. 2.2 kilo ohms, you see? Straight on the power button pins. So I will take down this button. With the heat from the back. The hot air 360 should be fine. Okay, just for you to see. The problem is I don't have this power button. You know what I mean? Okay, the power button is out. I can swap the power button with different button. But that will not solve the problem, yeah? You'll have a volume issue or something else. A menu button problem. So this is the button. And I can bet now are not 2.2 kilo ohms. The things probably get changed. Now it's fine. You see, now it's like, I can't even check. Now it's okay. But it has a problem. So all what we have to do is to open this button and clean it, if we can. If we not... If we can't open this... Well, I have to find a button then. And I don't think I can open this. I don't think.
Huh? What do you think? I think it's one piece. Ah, you think the secret is here? Okay, let's try. You think actually if I take this out, the button will come out? Possible. But how can I do it? Because I have these things here. Hmm. Yeah, that's the way how this can be open. Okay, so we have the home, the power button. Yeah, take this out, and yeah, we have that thing. And that under this, we have a bridge somewhere. Well, probably we can't see the bridge but here from here to here it's a bridge tiny bridge which, which is probably gone this can be clean But who knows? Yeah, it looks fine. Looks okay. This must be only clean. I'll use a... You know, a earbud. Let's clean it. Really need to clean inside. It's just a long video. Okay, inside is cleaned. We have to put this back. Yeah, and this back, and all the metal thing. You know, the biggest problem is to put back the metal. The button is clicking. The 
button will be pressed, this will be soldered on the board. I think we will be fine. And the pressure is on the power button. It's okay. We are fine. We're okay. What do I need? I need to take out the solder from there. Okay, so the solder is out. I'll put back the the button if we can. Yeah, of course we can. Why not? So the wire. I think this is dodgy. Yeah, what you will do if you don't have the button? Okay, we have the back pins. Good. Everything shall match here. You can't do a dodge. I can't do a dodge job because we have to give warranty. You know, it's no point giving him back now, and the man will come back like one month, two months, even more. It's no point. So I have to be sure here is solid. Clicking Yeah, 
know it's boring. Don't tell me. Fixing a power button. Can't believe it. Someone has to do it, you know? Someone has to do it. Okay, let's check with the multimeter. Do we have any resistance? No. The power button is working when when it's pressed. Yes, it's going to zero. <coughs> All what we have to do because we remove the cap, we remove the cap and the resistor, yeah? The resistor is fine. Uh, the capacitor. That resistor is a low ohm resistor, so. Yeah, so we have a nice bridge, exactly what we need. Let's check one more time. Here. We might be ping one, yeah, it's working fine. Problem solved. Let's test it. I think was some screws here. Yeah. But I don't remember. I think this. Yeah, probably. Okay, but should be one more. One more. It is a long boring job. Actually fixing what? Fixing a, a power button. It's not this one. No, not this one. But how did I lose the screw? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's here. Found it. You can't see, sorry. Yeah, so our power button it's working great. Yeah, let's plug it, let's put back the board, let's put everything inside. Because we are short now, everything is fine.
Who knows when you'll have a job like that? But I found, you know, I found, I found, even on TVs, on... Uh, sometimes the power buttons can be funny. Okay, this should be here. Here is another cable. Okay. A screen. Let's put a few screws just for testing. Because we have to check first to be sure it's good. Okay, the moment of true. Let's plug the charger. Plug the charger. Yeah, it's off. Pressing the power button. And I have light, you can see here. And the computer computer should come on. And it's working fine. Okay. No keyboard detected. Enter password, but that's not our problem. Okay, yeah, I know this was a long one. Anyway, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you like the video. And see you on the next one. But these are the worst, the random ones. But everything is fine. You have 19, you have 3.3. But it's not coming on, or it's coming on only sometimes. Yeah. Yep. Bye.